Uh, it just depends on who you get. All right. Sulfur dioxide. See, look at here. Did I drop that? No, that's an I. What about here? Is this carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide. All right. Now, this is something I would always suggest. You go through differential equations, you go anything you want. You're going to be memorizing all these crazy rules, all these theorems, and all this drama. Pick one thing that you know. Like, I know before you come into this room, you have heard of carbon monoxide. I know that, okay? You've heard of, your third grader has heard of that compound. So think, okay, do I use mono or monoxide? And see, once you've got your, your anchors, then you can apply it to more complicated examples, like nitrogen monoxide or carbon pentoxide, something that a normal human wouldn't even hear of. Okay, what about this CC? Uh, okay, this is cute. This should be CCL4. All right, it is a typo. All right, so you should be CCL4. That is carbon tetrachloride. Now, if you think that there, you thought that was CCI4, that's the same thing as C2I4, which would be called what? Dicarbon tetraiodide. The two valves, we don't drop it. So if we were taking an exam, I would have had to have accepted both of those, depending on how you read it, right? Did anybody put something other than this? All right. Wonderful. Carbon tetrachloride, very common organic solvent, but it wreaks havoc on the environment because it's one of the few organics to sink. All right, it's more dense than water. So you put it in the St. John's River, straight to the bottom it goes, and that's not good environmentally. Dichlorine, heptoxide. I'm dropping the A, All right? We dropping the A? We're dropping the A. All right, how about this joker here? These are binary acids. One atom plus another atom, that's it. Hydrobromic acid. This is called hydrosulfuric acid. And this is called hydrofluoric. All right, hydrofluorics really mean, does anybody remember what that does? No one remembers? That's what etches glass, right? We've not talked about that in here? Yes, no, maybe? Huh? No one's ever heard that? It's one of the only things known that actually will eat through glass. So I hate to work with that stuff. Made me very nervous. <laughs> Something that eat through glass, that just ain't natural. Okay, so look at here. I went to the NIST thing and I want to type up H2S. And this is a free website, by the way. All right. It's called hydrogen sulfide. Now we named it what? Hydrosulfuric acid? All right. Now this website here has all sorts of names. Um, dihydrogen monosulfide, dihydrogen sulfide, hydrosulfuric acid. Right? These are other names. Hydrosulfuric acid, stink damp, sulfur hydride, on and on and on. Um, this German? Do you know if that's German? That is German? Well, we can have her pronounce it if she's up for it. If she's not, then she just tells me she... Right? Yeah, tell me, how do you pronounce that in German? There you go. Right? So if you were in Germany and you want to know what that was, that's where it is. Now, if I told you to go find it, where would you go find it? H2S. Right? Go to the swamp. Do you guys not, uh, like, if you're driving down JTB right there at the Intercoastal Waterway, do you ever smell that odor? Yeah. That's H2S. All right. It's a byproduct of bacteria. So they're sitting there eating away at dead things. And then they release this up in the air. So it's a sulfur rotten egg stench. 
All right. Hepatic gas, uh huh. Yeah. And people hate that. People also hate ammonia, right? Does anyone here like to smell ammonia? All right. And evolutionarily, that's probably because of what? We don't like death. And whenever you've got ammonia smells and this smell here, what does that generally mean? Death. All right. So when you're driving down, the intercoastal, going to the beach on JTV, and you smell that, something's dead. Plants, animals, fish, they something dead and decaying, right? Which is wonderful out there in the salt marsh. Uh, but it doesn't, ain't good for the nose. So point of story is, is uh, uh, that is a wonderful website. NIST, National Institutes of Standards and Technology, uh, to get the all the weird names all of a sudden, right? So if me and Bridget was working in a lab together and she decided to be Smurfy one day and write German on there and she wasn't around, see, I could type it into that website and I could figure out what it was, you know, and I'd have to call her home and bother her and things like that. All right, are we good? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Let's take a break. I'll be back in 10 minutes or so and we'll start.